Well, let's now talk to former Cabinet Minister Rolf Mayer, working very closely, of course, with the late uh, former President F.W. de Klerk. During the country's transition to democracy in 1994, Mayer, you remember, was also appointed by de Klerk to be a chief negotiating officer uh, during those all-important Codessa talks in the early 1990s. A reminder as well, de Klerk passing away uh, at his home in Cape Town last week and uh, going to be cremated. Uh, after a private funeral uh, this coming Sunday. It's a pleasure to welcome Rolf Mayer uh, from Pretoria, joining us via Zoom this morning. Mr. Mayer, hello. Thank you for your time. Uh, if I can, uh, we start our conversation here with uh, your memories towards the end of the former president, the man you worked for. Well, <clears throat> you know, of course, the one thing that will always be stuck in our minds is what happened on the 2nd of February 1990. I, I think that is the the legacy that that FW is leaving behind in everybody's mind that, that were around at that stage. I mean, the one day South Africa was doomed to conflict, and the next day we were all liberated uh, when the announcement was made on the second of February that year to um, to 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 free Mr. Mandela and to free all other political prisoners and to start the process of dialogue and negotiations that followed. Um, so those were the things that got stuck in my mind, at least very, very clearly. And, you know, of course, we we all became liberated as, as a result of that. Can we talk about the video uh, that was posted shortly after uh, Mr. De Klerk's passing away so tragically uh, in Cape Town? A lot of people saying that he didn't do enough uh, to apologize uh, for all those years uh, as president for what happened during apartheid. Where do you stand on that? Well, I think the, the problem originated, if I can call it a problem, uh, originated when uh, he went to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to testify on behalf of the National Party there. And, and the question was already then asked whether he has all, uh, already then uh, unqualifiedly um, apologised for apartheid and the wrongdoings of apartheid. And that, that question remained, uh, unfortunately. You know, that was 1997. And that question remained, and, and I think what he tried to do with the video that was released last week was, was basically to say, well, he, he does um, apologize uh, on an unqualified basis or unconditional basis. And, and I think that is <clears throat> what, he, what he attempted to do. I can't say more than that simply because I was not part of the planning or anything around that with regard to the to the video mm. i can only say what i what i see like yourself uh, and uh, much of the criticism uh, leveled towards uh, the, the former president as well uh, not just about the the video itself but just uh, the leadership over the years some people are uh, getting very offended when uh, words are used that uh, he freed nelson mandela as opposed to nelson mandela fighting for freedom it's always such a sensitive topic isn't it uh, what do you what do you yeah. read into that when you see those kind of comments uh, uh, online and from people on the street yeah you see I think we have to, to give the context the reality is that we had the racial separation and um, and oppression for more than 300 years in this country since the first white people arrived on on the shores of Africa in this part of the continent and, and, and that is what FW succeeded in dismantling with what he did on the 2nd of February. The liberation struggle that the ANC started was not only after apartheid formally came into being after 1948. The ANC was formed in, in 1912 already mm. uh, to liberate the, the majority of people of this country. And, you know, so, so it, it took a, a, hang of a long time to get to that point. But the reality is that by the time that FW got the opportunity to, to do something about it, in other words, when he was elected leader of, of the country, as it was then, 1989, he immediately took steps within a question of a few months after he was elected. He took the, 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 the necessary step to, uh, to free Mr. Mandela and to, to, to start the process. And he very clearly said, it was about changing South Africa. In fact, the words that he used uh, in a personal discussion was, we want to look at that South Africa as it was, and we want to start completely anew. Uh, and, and I think that was very meaningful, and that described to my, in my uh, memory, 
what he had in mind and what he succeeded in doing. Uh, and, and right through the negotiating process of which I was part, um, up to 94, in other words, when the, when the transition happened to democracy, uh, he was totally committed to, uh, to ensure that that ideal become mm -hmm. reality. And, uh, and of course he did. Well, I appreciate your time, uh, former Cabinet Minister Rolf Mayer, uh, and condolences as well. Obviously, you worked alongside F.W. de Klerk. I'm sure it's a sad time for you, uh, as well, having worked with him all those years. Appreciate your time in speaking to us this morning here.